Today, I'm making a crown jewel dessert. We are joining my friend Anna at Cooking the Books in trying out a recipe from the 1962 Joys of Jell-O cookbook. We've both chosen light and refreshing desserts we feel may be appropriate for an Easter get-together. Or so we thought. You can turn on subtitles by pressing the CC button, and if you'd like to try this dessert at home, I'll be listing all of the ingredients and their measurements in the description under the video. Now, at this moment, with our ingredients at the ready, we may begin our dessert. For this crown jewel dessert, or broken window glass cake, we are going to need three different flavors of cubed gelatin, each prepared by combining one cup of boiling water with one three ounce package of jello, and mixing until completely dissolved. To this, we are now adding half a cup of cold water, and mixing again until evenly combined. Once properly prepared, we are going to pour each flavor into an 8 inch square pan and chill until firm, or overnight. Once the three flavors have become firm, we may move on to the next step of combining lemon gelatin, sugar, now what does that smell remind you of? Ah, Fruit Loops, and add one cup of boiling water to the mix. Stir until the gelatin and sugar have dissolved, before stirring in the pineapple juice. This is going to be a lovely mix of fruity flavors and colors. Allow this to chill until slightly thickened while we prepare our crust. Combine the graham cracker crumbs and melted butter, and stir until the butter has been evenly distributed. Now, we're going to pour this crumb mixture into a 9 inch spring form pan, and spread it out evenly. Next, using something with a wide flat base, such as a measuring cup or drinking glass, we're pressing the crumbs down to compress, as well as slightly up the edges to create a barrier to prevent any liquids from seeping through the pan. Now chilled and firm, we're cutting the gelatin into half inch cubes. First cut half inch strips in one direction, then flip and repeat in the opposite direction. To make removal easier, slide the knife along the edge of the pan to separate the gelatin. And finally, use a spatula to gently separate the cubes from the bottom of the pan. Next, we're preparing our whipped topping. First time using Dream Whip? Just pick a side and keep pulling. You'll get it. Didn't you know it comes with four envelopes? We'll make use of all of those. For our filling, prepare two envelopes as directed on the package. Add the mix, milk, and vanilla extract and beat on low until combined. Then, beat on high for 4 minutes until the topping thickens and forms soft peaks. Just like that. Now combine the whipped topping with the slightly thickened lemon gelatin. Whoops. Perhaps that shouldn't have chilled for so long. Scoop it in the bowl and let's see if we can make this work. Because the gelatin has solidified more than expected, I'm using a whisk to break it up and evenly mix it into the whipped topping. Now gently fold in the gelatin cubes, and pour the mixture into the prepared pan. Now doesn't this look marvelous? Chill at least five hours or overnight. Once the dessert has firmed, run a knife or spatula between the sides of the dessert and the pan, and remove the sides of the pan. A little lumpy, but this looks fantastic. You can serve as is, or if desired, spread additional prepared dream whip on the top and sides. Let's try and get it looking like the picture. I'm transferring my dessert onto a parchment paper lined cake stand, and spreading another two envelopes worth of Dream Whip along the sides and the top edge. Now, gently pull back the parchment paper strips from under the dessert, leaving you with a neat and tidy cake stand. As stated in the Joys of Jell-O cookbook, this is a spectacular dessert that fits busy schedules. The gelatin for the cubes may be made one day, and the remainder of the dessert can wait until the next day. Not exactly my idea of fitting into a busy schedule. To me, that means done in 30 minutes, not spread across two days. While this recipe produces a lovely and colorful dessert, my final result was far from perfect. In terms of flavor, this is a wonderful dessert. The filling is refreshing, creamy, and fruity, and the buttery graham cracker crust brings some nice warmth. However, the crust is crumbly and does not come out of the pan cleanly. The filling, while delicious, is very soft and unstable. 
and the Dream Whip Whip Topping may just be the biggest culprit in this whole recipe. Even following the directions, it stays fairly loose and liquid, making for a less than desirable finished look. The ratio of gelatin to whip topping in this filling seems very low, which may be the cause of the filling beginning to deteriorate almost immediately. I'm not sure if some products formulas have changed or if the ratios are just a bit off here. Would you recommend trying this recipe as directed in the book? Maybe not. It's a great idea and the flavors are there, but try playing around with the ratios or using a more firm, homemade whipped cream. I cooked a recipe from Joys of Jelly. Now go check out Anna's video at Cooking the Books to see if she had any more luck with her orange frost recipe. If you enjoyed this video or interesting vintage recipes, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and check out my vintage recipes playlist. I upload a vintage recipe the first Thursday of every month. And if you'd like to watch another video, you can click that card over on the right. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you around. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next Thursday.